Yo, so today's question comes from Jeremiah Johnson. He wants to know, yo, Elliot, I'm a 49 year old man that loves lifting heavy. I see many videos and influencers saying that it is not wise at my age. I'd love to hear your insights on this topic. Also, I watch many of your old school videos on deadlifting. They're my favorite. Glad to see you back at it, man. So if you're anything like me, you're addicted to lifting heavy. And a part of the reason why I love lifting heavy is because I'm good at it, dude. And so I always shied away from high rep bodybuilding stuff or, you know, CrossFit. I wanted to be a strong man because I'm good at pushing, dragging, flipping, throwing, doing a lot of heavy lifting. And as I've gained in age, right? I gained gain in age, right? Gain that too, you know, just gain muscle, gain age. So as I gained in age, I've had to make some different choices about how I go about training, but it doesn't mean that you gotta give up lifting heavy. Don't listen to anybody tells you you gotta give up lifting heavy. There's a long track record of amazing men over the decades who have lifted heavy up until their death. You can do that. In fact, there's a little book. I have it here. I didn't pull it out. Actually, I got it right here. I'm going to give you a bunch of book, a bunch of book recommendations. So there's this book here uh, by this guy named Bob Peoples. And so you can see he's got a lot of weight on this bar right here. He would throughout his entire life until the day he died, he would load up his power rack with a whole lot of weight. And then he would just pick, this was his like training routine. He would pick up the weight. So maybe it was about knee height. And then he'd just hold it with his hands and he'd hold it as long as he can. He'd try to maintain his posture and then he'd drop it. He called that his health lift. Bob Peoples, and so old school guys. I'm gonna to talk to you about some old school guys. But he called that his health lift because the amount of strain that it put on the tendons and the nervous system uh, allowed him to maintain a strong erect posture and grip strength. We know that there's a correlation between grip strength and longevity. And so the, the book is, is pretty cool. You can grab it if you want to. Published by uh, Super Strength Training, Bill Hinnenberg. Let him know that Elliot sent you. I bought so many books from him throughout the years. So you can do it. Dudes have done it and you can do it too. So before I go into three principles for lifting heavy till the day you die, I want to share another great resource with you. So I intended to show this book. But this is the book I want you to get. Definitely get this one. This one's called Gray Hair, Black Iron by Brooks Kubrick. You might remember Brooks Kubrick from Dinosaur Training. And so he wrote this book when he was a young man. And uh, of course you can see it's all about straw man training. It's like lifting barrels and flipping tires and dragging sleds and a lot of stuff that I've enjoyed doing over the years. But as he grew older, he recognized that he needed to change things up a little bit. So this is the young man's version of the book. Here's the old man's version of the book. I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about what he proposes in the old man's version of the book because he's an old man now too. I think he's probably close to 70 or something and he still lifts like a beast, but does it a bit differently and here's how. So uh, number one, if you're gonna to continue to lift heavy into your old age, you've got to consider your frequency. You can't go to the gym and bust it up seven days a week like you did when you were a teen. You're going to have to gauge your recovery. Recovery is everything. And you know, it's not that when you get older, you can't work hard. You can work hard, you should work hard. My dad is in his 70s, he still works hard. The difference is you have to space it out in such a way that you recover from your hard work. And that's going to be dependent on a myriad of different factors, including your sleep, your nutrition, your genetics, and whatever. But you've got to pay attention. Don't go from busting it up one day to going trashing yourself again the next day. What's going to really happen, you know, besides screwing your joints up, which may be a problem. But what I discovered was that my nervous system got fried. And so I had to do, as the book suggests, spread my heavy lifts out. Instead of, you know, we're used to doing things like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, it might need to be Monday, Thursday, Monday, Thursday, right? You might have to spread out. You may only be a lift tw heavy twice a week, but it depends on how well you recover. Your hormones have something to do with it. So you got to consider that frequency will be more spread out. That's number one. Number two, abbreviated workouts. This is a game changer. Just like I spoke about that guy, Bob Peoples, his workout when he was say like, I don't know, 80 years old, was he would go into the gym, he would pick up that, that deadlift, basically it was a rack 
uh, rack pull. He'd do a rack pull, he'd lift it up to his thighs, and he'd just hold it there as long as he could, and just breathe, bang, drop the weight, and that was his workout. That's what he did forever. Abbreviated workout, I mean, how long did that last? If he did a warm up, which I don't remember, if he did a warm up, I mean, the whole thing could last 15 minutes. An abbreviated workout means you're not, you don't need to be in a gym for 45 minutes to an hour like you did when you were 20. You can literally go in there, warm up, hit one lift at a time, right? Say today your lift is overhead press, go in there, warm up your shoulders, and then you hit your abbreviated workout. Now, what does an abbreviated workout look like? An abbreviated workout is no more than three exercises. Make sure they're compound exercises if you're going to lift heavy, right? You don't do lateral raises in a heavy workout. You do presses, you do pulls, you do squats, you do stuff like that, rows even. And you're not gonna do any more than five reps, and that's pushing it. You're wanting to do doubles and triples. And you might do a, a number of different, like work your way up to a heavy double by doing lighter doubles up to a heavy double, right? But your frequency and your volume also need to be low. So the abbreviated workout is another way of saying you gotta keep your volume condensed. You gotta keep your volume low. You can't go in there, even five by five, five by five is a lot of volume for an older dude. It's good for younger guys because they need to keep hitting that muscle so that it, you know, there's a lot of protein synthesis going on there. The hormones are a little different, right? And, and they don't have the wear and tear that a guy like you or I might have from years of beating ourselves up, right? So five sets is a lot. Like you might want to do a warm up and maybe three sets of two. Remember, your goal here is to lift heavy. And that means stimulate the nervous system and build that neural drive. That's really all it is. You're not telling me I wanna build muscle. If you wanna build muscle, that's a totally different game. So if you're just trying to maintain or build strength, you don't need high volume. You don't need high frequency and you don't need high volume. And then number three, avoid stupid exercises. What do I mean by that? It's a bit subjective. There are certain exercises that are good exercises, but you shouldn't be doing them. Case in point for me, back squats, I love them. I wish I could do them, but it's stupid because every time I do it, the whole left side of my body hurts. Why? Because I tore my Achilles tendon when I was you know, about six years ago, seven years ago, I tore my Achilles tendon on the right side. And so I started leaning into my left side and I've got crazy muscular imbalances that just aren't fixed yet, working on them. But in the meantime, like why go squat heavy when all I'm gonna do is be like doing this for the rest of the week, like twisting and trying to get my hip from hurting, right? A stupid exercise is an exercise that you know hurts. So another one is I don't bench press. I don't squat, I don't bench press. Not that they're bad exercises, but because I have injuries. I tore my right bicep about five years ago, right? All these injuries. So I have a very unstable right shoulder. And so no, no, no matter what I do, how I try to do a bench press, it's like achy and it's hurting me. And I gotta spend the next four days stretching and mobilizing and doing a bunch of stuff uh, just to feel normal. It's a stupid exercise, I don't do it. So don't do stuff that hurts, I know, right? Like rocket science. But if it hurts you, don't let your ego, and when I say ego, I, you know, we, old man ego is a little different than young man ego. Old man ego is more about this is what I've always done. This is this is how it's done. Like I can't change that. I've done it like this for 20 years. Why would I stop doing it? That's old man ego. Young man ego is I'm gonna destroy this thing and I'm gonna destroy my body along the way and I'm gonna die in a explosion of glory. Right? That's how it was when I used to lift, right? Like I didn't care if my fucking head blew off. It didn't matter. Getting this thing. E that's not even desirable when you get to a certain age, right? Like to me, I, I, I look at that and I applaud that for the young dudes and I watch videos of myself and I'm like, hey, that's cool. I have no interest in doing that. Just not even a little bit, right? So avoid stupid exercises. And for you, that's gonna be whatever it is that doesn't feel good for you, right? Do exercises that feel good. So those are the three, right? You gotta, you gotta lower the intensity. I mean, I'm sorry, you wanna keep the intensity high. I, I should have said that earlier, but like I assume you're lifting heavy. That means keep your intensity high. Keep the intensity high, lift heavy, uh, but you're gonna have to lower that frequency and that might means you gotta undulate your 
uh, periodization a little bit, uh, abbreviated workouts, lower volume, avoid stupid exercises, and then I'll give you three quick bonuses. Number one, I stretch for about 30 minutes every single day. I don't do any lifts until I stretch my hips. There are three stretches that I use. I stretch the hip flexors, I stretch the QL, quadratus lumborum, and my, uh, well, it's, it's sort of my IT band and piriformis. So I do like a pigeon stretch, right? And of course you can't see me the way I do it right now. Maybe I'll make another video and show you. But I don't do nothing until I stretch mainly my hip area. Why the hip area? Because it's, for me, that's the area that grows most tense and tight because I sit a lot. I stand and I sit, I have a stand up desk, but a lot of times, you know, just because of the nature of the work that I'm doing, I'm sitting a lot, right? And so you wanna move out of that flexed position. Also, I'll do some stuff for the shoulders, but not too much, my shoulders feel pretty good. Stretch, do cardio, cardio every day. I get it as a lover of heavy lifting, we don't wanna do cardio. I never wanted to do cardio. Only way I would do cardio was if it was like strongman and it was something that took 90 seconds or more. You know that, you know that old powerlifting thing, right? Like if it's longer than 90 seconds, it's cardio. Well, not really, it is, but not really. So I bought a rower and 20 minutes, sometimes two times a day, I'm rowing. I have a lake in my backyard, it takes, it's about a half a mile around. I walk my dogs three, four, five times a day sometimes. So just a lot more of low intensity cardio to keep that heart going. It helps with the recovery big time. So don't neglect your cardio. And then number three, bioenergetics, breathing into your balls. So you gotta do opening exercises and, and things that, that sort of move the lymph, right? What do I mean by that? So you see what I'm doing right now? <laughs> when I say opening, it's because it opens the throat, it opens the heart, opens the, the, the it, a lot of times we think in terms of stretching and it's just our external muscles. But we have an inner tube also. And so there are muscles that are deep inside here. There are muscles like the pericardium, you know, it's more like fascia, but there's muscles in here. The solar plexus needs to be considered. That's a muscle. Your pelvic floor is a muscle. And those muscles tend to either be ignored or they grow tense, especially if you're doing a lot of um, like hydro hydraulic lifting. If you're lifting heavy, you're doing a lot of that valsalva maneuver, right? So that, all, they get, you create a lot of tension in here. So every day after I do my stretches, I do one of these. Man, everything is just relaxing. I feel my pelvic floor relaxing. I feel my diaphragm relaxing, throat. So this way. Shake your hand. Just have fun with it. It feels good. I don't know, it was a little weird. I'm the only crazy dude that'll do this on YouTube, but uh, it feels good. It's, it's very Matt Fury, one of these really old school fitness dudes, uh, one of the earliest guys to do like online marketing and fitness. Um, he still trains to this day. He's an old guy, but he proposes a lot of like breathing exercises now and he calls this I, I bought a course from him not too long ago and he calls this the health shake uh, notice a, notice a, a, a theme the health lift right it's a focused on health the health shake uh, he says you can shake out sickness i think it has something to do with the lymph nodes or whatever you could use a, a, a one of these mini trampolines rebounder uh, that has been shown to be very good and healthy for you the reason why i make noise is because there tends to be a little bit of tension in the throat here. So there's that, and then also side to side. So I know you can't see me, but I'm moving my arms, I'm doing this. And that sort of loosens things up, because if you're a heavy lifter, you're tensing all the time. So you gotta stretch and you gotta loosen things up, right? Just like a, it's just like a fighter, it's not even that weird, right? Watch boxers sometimes, right? They do this, right? So that's it, that's all, hope that helps, dude, done. Porn. 68% of church-going men watch it secretly, hiding this vice from their wife. For other men, it's alcohol 
or drug use? Are you willing to risk your marriage, family, and finances for sinful pleasures and vice? Or are you ready to fight back? If you're a married Christian businessman or entrepreneur caught in the clutches of drinking, drugs, or jerking off, realize that every moment spent in these vices is literally destroying your life. Is this the man God called you to be, to live like this? If you're ready to go to war against vice and take your life back, here's my advice. Click the link in this video or visit waronvice.com to book a call with me to see if we're a good fit for going into battle together. I'll see you on the inside.